Uh, good morning, all my dear students. Uh, still, uh, very less students are joined. So, please, uh, anyone, are you present uh, in the campus? Please. If anyone you are present, yes, sir. Uh, how many of you are there? Hello, am I audible? How many you are there in the campus? 11 students. Only 11 students, okay. So where you are sitting? Where you are sitting? Hello. Lab 12, sir. Lab 12, okay. So what we will do? Can we take offline or online? So only eleven student means uh, okay. Uh, you attend today online because I am also not uh, feeling well. Uh, so today I will continue with online only. Uh, please, uh, it is my request if more number of uh, strength of friends are available in the campus. Uh, it is uh, good for to take the offline. Okay. Uh, in here today, one day you have to attend online. Uh, I, I'm not take too much, only a uh, few things I have to cover in the unit number one. Almost today, uh, just I have to complete the unit number one. Only two more topics are remaining. Uh, okay. So please, I'm also not that much good today because not feeling well. So please cooperate with me. 
So as per the syllabus, uh, before going to start the syllabus, already we have covered some introduction part, some basic needful things. After that, I have to cover in the last uh, uh, in the last lecture we covered. I will just open the syllabus. Okay, still the only 58 students are there out of 160, 160, 170 students. What about remaining 100 students? Please, you must and should all of you uh, attend the lectures, otherwise you have to lose. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, dear all students, this is the syllabus copy. And the syllabus copy, all of you have that last uh, lectures I have to send this syllabus copy. So here in this syllabus copy, uh, of course, some basic needful things, introduction part, we have to cover a brief history of computing uh, we covered in the last lecture. And a uh, uh, rare human model we covered in the last lecture, all the different uh, rare human models of computers. And also, we covered all different types of generations about the computers. So generation one, generation two, generation three, generation four, and generation five, all those we covered in the last lecture. So totally, this much topics on how to totally uh, brief history and uh, Van Newman model and uh, generation of the computers. So these three I have to cover. And uh, for this model, I have to prepare slide also, uh, presentation. So that presentation uh, PPT today I will send to you. And uh, today I have to complete this model. System bus already you know, is the system bus model. This was also big things I talked in the last lecture. So today, again, I will uh, cover the system bus model and level of machines. In that level of machines, two types of levels are there. That is upward compatibility and levels of computer. These things we have to cover in the levels of machine. After that, uh, we will cover a typical computer system. We'll cover it. Yes, come, come.
Okay. So uh, this is the syllabus, dear students. Uh, this one we have to study uh, upward compatibility. In that, uh, there are two types: upward compatibility and the level of, levels of computer. So up to that, some typical computer system of Van human also we have to study for today's. Okay. So uh, before that. Uh, all of you come to the mic that uh, COA group. Come to COA group. In that COA group, uh, I will send you a PPT. So today I will send you a PPT. And uh, within next lecture, uh, I have to give you uh, handwritten notes. Okay, again, one or two days I need to complete the notes. And I will give you that one also. So here, uh, this PPT, I will send you for the unit number one. Just all of you go through it. Okay. Unit number one PPT. Okay, so today uh, I will start with that. So this is a lecture. So what we will do? See here, history of the computing. In the last lecture we have studied, just you go through this and under the history, the first one is comes uh, in the year of 1954. They have to well started beginnings uh, history of the computer that is Babbage's engine computer machine. So after that, we have to cover it in the last lecture. That is this of the topics, uh, brief history of computers, uh, hardware architecture, software, programmable languages, and different five generations, right? So in that uh, creating a code, we have to uh, study it in the last lecture. Just to go through it, this is the world computer in the history of around 1950 to 1960s. That's a big size of the computer. So after that, uh, the history of 1940s, they have to develop this kind of computers. That one we call it as ENIC. Okay, that is first general uh, purpose computer. The ENIAC is the thing, but it is the electronic uh, numerical integrator and computer. This one we call it as electronic. So that is generated uh, developed in the first year of 1940s. And in next, in the year of 1957, uh, the again general purpose computing is based on that Newman start. So here when Newman <coughs> in this Van Newman architecture, he started in the year of 1950 around. 50 to 55 because his last lifespan is 57 so that real computer was developed in the year of 1950 uh, after that uh, they have to develop for the fan human this is the one a typical computer that is hardware computers and in that we are going to be using software like operating system system software and application software system software are nothing but uh, operating system and application software are nothing but like your ms uh, word excel wordpad notepad these are application software so this is the history of the computer that is we have to study in the long from the long and that is mainly uh, they have to use it with uh, Van Neumann concept because Van Neumann is the started of that computer. So after that, this is the uh, uh, this is the way of how they have to store in the computer because at the beginning stage, uh, this is a very new concept in the world wide. So they have to take care more and they have to store it in the EAC conditions and so like that. 
After that, they have to design with the hardware architecture, with output device, uh, input device, uh, memory unit, uh, central processing unit, control unit, and all. this is nothing but the CPU, central processing unit. Okay, that CPU we use for uh, central processing containing the algebraic and logical, this is automatic and uh, logical units. So this entire part is nothing but it's the heart of the uh, brain of the computer that controlling all the things and which is connected with the memory. That memory is either it is a resistance or storage devices and whatever we are providing, it is the input and output. This is the well-defined computer is gender, uh, developed in the year of 1960 to 1970. That time history. Just this one frame they have to prepare. So up to that, uh, in that how the memory is going to be manipulated that one the computer memory is categorized into different different reasons that one also we have to saw in the last lecture and this one computer software how it is using that application software and system software system software is nothing but operating system application software are the thing but you are uh, excel sheet uh, latex ms word calculator, all those things you are using, the entire uh, explanations also I given you in the last lecture. So next, uh, programming language, how they have to start it. Actually, uh, they were, they are started with the programming languages. From that day onwards, then generation E starts. <coughs> From that day onwards, the generation is starts so that first program whatever they have to start it with the first program that is with the machine languages they are started so that machine languages generation we call it as first generations we call it as first generation and in the second generations they call prepared as assembly level languages up to that they have to prepare with high level languages and assembly language programs, they call it as uh, machine, uh, that second generation. First generation is nothing but uh, machine uh, languages. Second generation is nothing but assembly languages. And third generation is nothing but high level languages. And fourth generations are high level combined with the computerization visualization, like MATLAB, uh, all comes under you know, Java, .NET, C Sharp. All are comes under fourth generation of languages. That is a brand new one, fourth generation. And whatever after the fourth generations, we are using with the new technologies. Uh, it is around the 2000 onwards. Uh, in the year of two, uh, 1995 to 19, uh, 1995 to 2000. They have to use the fourth generation of the computer. But after fourth, uh, 2000 onwards, almost in the year 2003 onwards, uh, we have to use the fifth generation of the computer. 2003 onwards to 2017 and 18. But last one is not the syllabus, only up to five generations they have to mention. But currently in the market, we are using sixth generation. We are using sixth generation, that, that one you have to keep in your mind. So up to that, uh, we studied programming workflow, how uh, the end plot care are going to be worked in the different, different generations. And by using all those uh, programming concepts, we are solving the problems within the computers. By using the computers, we have to solve all different kind of problems. And this much we have to study in the last lecture. So now I will start with system bus as per uh, your syllabus. See, uh, as per your syllabus, now I have to start with system bus model. So in this system bus model, in this system bus model, uh, this is the, okay, before that, one more I have to use system bus organization before that system model uh, just i have to cover two system bus organization 
So in that, whatever we have buses are using in the connection between one device to another device or within the devices, we have to use the system bus. So that is through the memory main, our system bus is going to be connected with the memory. It may be a ROM and RAM and that is connected with input and output devices. And also it is connected with arithmetic and logical units, register array and control unit. These things we have to use it here. So input means whatever we are providing the data from the keyboard and output means whatever we have to getting the output means execution path required uh, output that is nothing but the output. And here in the memory, so all the logical things are going to be manipulated within the memory only. It is like a content of register that is raw mind RAM. And the remaining CPU, that CPU is nothing but central processing in it, which is containing all the automatic and logical operations. And uh, some memory also there here for the manipulation of all different kind of operations. And all those things are controlled by the control unit. That is. Control unit. So entire this control unit, input and output unit, memory unit are interconnected with the system bus. Okay. Then what is system bus? So and one more thing, that van human model of first digital computer is like this. It is same as this one is rearranged. Just input and output, uh, control unit is here, memory unit is here, automatic and logical unit is here. So the slide number twenty two is exactly same as the slide number twenty three, but both are just uh, one step. I have to show you again. Okay. So next, uh, as per your syllabus, system bus model. So now I will go through the system bus model. This is the system bus model. In the system bus model, uh, there are three types of buses we have to use: data bus. Uh, address bus and control bus. So here, these buses, different different buses, I have to show you. Data bus is here, address bus is here, control bus is here. So one thing you have to observe, data bus, whatever connection is there between CPU to data bus, memory to data bus, and input and output to data bus, that is bidirectional error is there. Please all of you carefully check that is bidirectional error is there. And from the address bus, everything is whatever connected with CPU, memory, and input and output, that is any direction, only one direction is there. And again, one more you have to check that is control bus. Control bus is also a bidirectional. So it means that out of uh, three buses in the system bus, two bus are bi-directional and one bus is unidirectional. Unidirectional bus is address bus and remaining two bus like data bus and control bus, these two are bi-directional. So then what is unidirectional and what is bi-directional? Whatever the data is transferred only in one direction, it means that only transfer the data, that's what we have to call it as address bus and our uh, unidirectional bus and whichever the data is transmit and receive okay sending and receiving both are happened then those buses we call it as bi-directional bus for example data bus and control bus so this is the bus system model and this buses are having uh, address bus is containing 20 bits and control bus and data bus, which are containing 16 bits. Okay. Because of single unidirectional, it is having a more than uh, bits of control bus and data buses. So this is the entire uh, system bus. And along with this, that these three different buses like data bus, address bus and control bus, that is going to be connected with CPU, memory, and input and output. Whatever we have to use with the central process again, all it is interconnected by the system bus as per required amount of data bus, address bus, and control bus. Okay. So next, uh, I will move to uh, levels of machines.
okay system bus is only this much only not more than that and even one more step i have to explain means uh, one example i will give you in the uh, uh, your st state transport so in that uh, driver is nothing but what it is a address and uh, control bus is what it is a the conductor and data bus is are nothing but passengers okay so passengers are nothing but data means wherever they have to go transport want to transport the passenger and address bus means it is a driver whichever the particular passenger wants to stop near the stop that time it is going to be stop it and send the passengers to the outside from the buses and in the control bus means that the conductor how the conductor is going to be managed when the stop comes by the vehicle he is stop the bus again by the vehicle he is allowed to go through the bus okay so this is the one example also we have to afford i uh, study for this system bus with that data address side control buses okay so this is the about the uh, bus system bus so next i will go to uh, as for the syllabus uh, levels of machines so in the levels of machines there are two types upward compatibility and the levels of computer so next is different uh, levels of machines are here so in that two types upward compatibility and the levels again in the levels so many types are there user level high level assembly language level micro programmed and hardware control level uh, functional units level logical gates and transistors and wires okay so these are again different types of levels so totally in the levels of machine there are main two types just you remember that one is upward compatibility and one more is the levels under this level again so many categories are there so in that upward compatibility uh it means that just a minute so in the upward uh compatibility the this invention of the transistor lead a rapid development for the computer hardware and with this development uh it came problem of compatibility so that computers wanted to take advantage of the newest and fastest machines so to determine uh, fast executions and the uh, architecture of old softwares would not be run in the new hardware so that compatibility means some complex complications old software to new software in the new hardware is not running properly for example uh, the ms office 7 do not work in ms office 10 or do not ms office 7 any of them they not work in the higher version of ms office you may observe that okay so those kind of compatibility they how to make it as a different uh, levels to solve that problems are overcome of that problems so the hardware or the software compatibility and that becomes serious that users often delay purchasing a new machine because the cost of rewriting of each the software to the new machine it may get increase in the cost and the user can uh, lose the some benefitness okay and the computer whenever they have to purchase it should often uh, unable to largest user and the old software of the data sets well it is portable to the users so for that reason they have to uh, some complex of compatibility that one is going to be overcome with the new versions so to avoid this uh, compatibility they have to use it different levels different types of levels those different types of levels are nothing but i'll show you here so different types of level that is uh, user level and high level language and assembly language machine with a code level and control level uh, functional unit level and logic gates and transistors and along with the wires also and some interactions between the level in that maybe a programmer uh, point of view maybe instruction set architecture point of view or it may be a computer architect's point of view <laughs> <laughs> 
So at the first one, uh, user level. At the first one, the user level. In that, the most of familiar with the user of the application program uh, that should be in the computer. And at this level, the user can interact with the computer by running the programs. Okay. So due to this complexity again. Uh, the user want to computer to high programs that should be run on it and a little of the internal or a low level structure should be visible to the user that is the user level so next one that is high level uh, of language high level language level high level longest level it's high level longest level in that from um, machine language to high level languages transformation, many of the programs of the computer in the high level language, such as C programming, Java, Pascal, Fortran, has to be interacted with the computer at this level. So the uh, programmer only to language and the other difficulties to translate with this high level languages like C, C, C++, Java, Pascal, Proton, all those languages that comes under this language level, okay? So next one is assembly or machine code languages. As you uh, know the, in the generation of the computer, that is uh, third one is assembly language programming or machine code levels, right? So in that from uh, user level to high level and high level to machine level languages, some code is again, it is a mismatching for the execution. So to overcome up this, again, one more level, they have to found it, that is machine code level. Or we have to normally say that assembly level, okay? That is the third part of assembly language or machine code. So next one, that is uh, the control level. So as we are, uh, they have to discover the hand human or to discover the hand human model of typical computer. That is one unit they have to use it and control it. So this control unit, which can control in all the functions of the many things in the computer. That is control level. So next one is the functional unit level. That functional uh, unit level is nothing but all the operations like automatic operations, logical operations, addition, uh, that increment, decrement, or whatever the kind of operations are comes, that is comes under functional unit level. Based on that operations, they have to make it as a categorized and solve that overcome problems. So after that, logic gates they have to use it, transistors and wires they have to use it. Okay. So if the functional unit level there is a complication about the uh, logical operations. That's what they have to use, started to use it. logic gates in the next level. And transistors, they have to start to use with the wires, that is the uh, IC chips, integrated circuit chips also. They have started to use it in the next level. And at the last, uh, they have to start it with interactions between the levels. Like one device to another device, so peripheral devices, printers, scanners, speaker, whatever uh, you have using external devices, that interaction between other devices. So this interaction between other devices, again, there are uh, three subcategories. That is a uh, programmer view, uh, instruction set architecture, and a computer architecture. So as per the user, programmer, whoever to develop the Software means by uh, coding it. Though as per those point of view, they have to build it as segregation. And as second one is as per the architecture, architecture of the computer, either is it suitable for that software to run in the system that is based on instruction set of architecture. So after that, uh, they are using the computer. Uh, architecture views. So instruction set architecture at the last one is the computer architecture. Instruction set architecture means whatever the instructions they have to use it to execute the program. Instructions are nothing but the commands in a program that instruction set is used. So these are the different levels of uh, types of levels used in the computer. Just you go through it 
and each level two to three lines you have to write by your own. So complete notes I will give you. Don't worry. Just for you understand, these are the levels. Every yeah, one one point you have to write two to three lines. It becomes more than half an hour, half page. Or it nearly nearly becomes two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's one point seven there. There seven into three lines is twenty one line. So nearly you will get for me uh, one page of answer for this different types of levels. Okay. So this is your uh, different types of computer levels. The levels of computer. Okay, this is a different types of computer level. So next one, uh, I'll go to last topic. As per your first unit, that is a typical computer system. So this is the last topic for your first unit. In the typical computer system, what they made it is not more than that. Again, they have to explain the concept of pan-human uh, architecture of computer only. That is typical computer system. Whatever now you are using. Uh, monitor, keyboard, mouse, and uh, PC. It is nothing but a typical computer system. So that one I will show you here through the slide. See, this is the typical computer system. So this one, all of you are aware of that. Okay. So here, uh, one keyboard is there, one mouse is there, one monitor is there, and that monitor containing a screen. And here one external device we are connected that is a speaker and one more external device we are connected uh, that is a microphone and this is the computer main CP. Whatever PC we call it as this is the computer. So this one we have to say it is a typical computer system. The typical computer systems are the thing but whatever daily uh, in the labs, you, whatever you are using, all are typical computer system only, same structure, but they are using new configurations, very high configurations as per current trend in the market, they have to use it, okay? So those are called as uh, typical uh, computer system only. So in this typical computer system, monitor, as you know, keyboard, mouse, uh, speaker, microphone, it's okay. So, but in the PC, computer means this is the CPU, central processing unit. Inside that, what are the components are there? Inside that, what are the components are there? I have to show you in the next slide. See, this is the PC, no? This is the PC. If you have to open this, if you have to open this PC, then that inside is looks like this. That inside is looks like things. That's what, that, that is nothing but typical motherboard system. So this is the entire motherboard is there. Okay, you just you have to open your desktop PC, uh, PC one plate uh, open, you have to open inside. It should be visible like this. So this one, this entire board, we call it as motherboard. It is an Intel motherboard from the company of Intel motherboard. And here uh, there is a uh, printed circuits, buses are there inside this buses and graphics card is also there so for the uh, game purpose we are using the graphics card okay and this one we have to say that is a power supply there's a main uh, ac power supply is connected to this place and uh, this is what there's a one uh, fan is mounted that is cpu cooled by the computer fan there's a one fan is there inside this for the process is make to be a cool, okay? And this portion, whatever this portion is there, that is nothing but we have to use it for CD or DVD drives. CD or DVD drives we have to use. This is the front face, okay? So again, uh, we have to use it one more memory that is hard disk. So this is the main part of uh, CPU computer inside the computer. This is the main part of CPU. So after, see, once this motherboard is there, though, <coughs> okay. <laughs> so again, once this motherboard is there, though, so that motherboard, so see, this is nothing but whatever you have inside the, all these devices like uh, PCI, graphics card, power supply, CPU, DVD, hard disk, okay. all these are interconnected with the 
motherboard to the buses. These are the wires are the thing, but what? These are the buses. So that motherboard is looks like. So this one is at the olden days in the 1990 time, uh, they have to use the AMD process. So that AMD operations of 200 base motherboard is the one of the, so here integrated audio uh, is connected here, uh, integrated fireways and uh, I, that is uh, 2x with the signals, 132 bits. So, so many things are there. So, SATA is used here and SCI is used here. So, that SATA is nothing but uh, okay. The SATA SATA is means it is a serial advanced technology attachment. SATA serial advanced technology as attachments. And this one SCSI, it means a small computer system interface. Small computer system, just a minute. Okay, so this is the two things, and this is the programmable control interface PCI. And here, so many chips they have to include here. Uh, okay, so this is just a, a one look of motherboard how it is there inside of the computer. So this is your uh, typical computer system. So dear all students, today's whatever I covered the topics is very small topics. So system bus model I covered, uh, level of machines I covered, upward compatibility, the levels of computer, and a typical computer system. So this is uh, all about your first unit of computer organization and architecture. Only small topics, very, very smallest uh, unit is there, this one. So already uh, as per this unit, I have to transfer to you a PPT. So just you go through this PPT and uh, within your next lecture, I have to provide you complete uh, notes of this model. Complete notes of notes on the unit number one. Just wait for one or two days, okay? So this is all about your first unit. So please all of you go through it, whatever I saved to you, uh, PPT. And any doubts are there, please let me know. And clear explanation notes, I will give you within one or two days just to wait for that. So, just wait. I have to take attendance. So, please don't log out anyone. And uh, student strength is very less. Please make sure that attend more uh, number of students. Strength should be no mean a good week.
okay uh, yes okay dear students uh, please uh, all of you go through uh, complete uh, first unit of computer organization very small unit and uh, next lecture onwards we have to start in our second unit that is big chapter second unit is too much big compared to other second nine eight units are too much big so after this first unit we will go for second unit in the next lecture onwards and before started second minute i have to provide you complete handwritten notes of this first minute so please be careful about the whatever we are covering the syllabus and you have to do study according to that okay so this is all about from my side misses please uh, regularly you have to attend the classes 160 students only 81 students are present only half of the students So remaining half of the students, what you are doing uh, this time again, it is offline uh, exams are there. There is no excuse for online exams this time. So please try to attend all the all uh, classes. Better offline. Okay, when you feel it not possible to come and attend here, at least we have to attend through the online. So this is the message from my side. And today also I'm not that much feeling well. So. so that's what i have to handle the online class but next class onwards i have to take it offline only okay so thank you all for your patience this thing and cooperating me in my bad condition thank you all now we can log out and go for lunch